out now. Hey guys, so I'm gonna do a terrarium planting today and I got this terrarium here. Actually, I had been growing an apicia or a flame flower in here, but during the winter it was up against my window and if you know anything about apicia, they do not like to be cold and unfortunately got some chill damage and it was from the point of no return. So that was unfortunate. But if you look at the bright side, I got a fresh new terrarium and I figured we'd do a little DIY and do some planting. So I have a number of things on the table here, which I'll go over. I'll go over a little bit more of the soil or the potting medium that we're going to be potting this up in. And I have some of these tools. These are more of my aquarium tools, but I quite like them for terrarium planting because as you could see, this one has, you know, not, not too small of a hole. I could fit my hand in there, but this is also quite nice uh, to be able to work with a longer tool in order to be able to maybe straighten out some of the things, uh, you know, the soil, or if you have a longer knife, or uh, scissors and you could actually get in there without having to reach your hand in. Um, so I would also recommend these, great for kind of multi-purpose use for houseplants. And then of course I have some plants over here. Now there's, these right here are Monstera siltipicanas. You could see that there's a lighter version, a SIBO blue version and a darker version. And these are Peperomia. This is Peperomia tri trinervula. This one is Hemiographis. This one was actually named Peperomia hoffmanii, but it's not a Peperomia hoffmanii. I think it's a Meridiana. And we have some Pileas over here, which I think add a nice little brightness of color. This one's a little bit more silver. This one is also like a light green silvery sheen. Another Begonia, this is Begonia conchifolia. I think I, this is a beautiful one. I really like the peltate leaf and then also another peperomia. And you could see that I do like planting in glass just because it kind of builds up the humidity for a lot of plants, especially plants that like to be in a bit more of a higher humidity range. You could see that this one, I had peperomia jamesoniana, this one as a small guy, and peperomia caparata in here, but you could see it's just kind of like spilled over this particular terrarium and I'm just gonna leave it like that really shaggy, it's okay. <laughs> I don't mind when they kind of overgrow themselves and um, let nature take, take its course. So as far as the substrate goes, sometimes I do a drainage layer in the bottom. So maybe it's a little bit of rock or charcoal. You don't always need that, especially if you're planting plants that have a little bit more of a root structure and you could see that these are quite long and you don't wanna put a drainage layer and then all of a sudden all the plants are kind of up here in this like little bottleneck. So what I'm gonna do is actually make a little bit more of a well-draining potting medium. So I pretty much used half of Espoma's organic cactus mix and half perlite. And I also added some kind of lava stones or you could get like a bonsai mix and you could add that to the mix as well. I think it kind of brings a little bit more depth and color and of course, aeration to the soil. So what I'm gonna do is actually just fill a little bit of the bottom here and I'm gonna start planting. So you probably won't hear me say very much, but you could actually watch me plant the terrarium. So I like using a little bit more of shallow spades and also spoons for work like this just because it makes it a little bit easier. You don't need something too deep. I like this shovel personally because you could fit it down in sides and it doesn't have, it's not really a large scooper. I'm just gonna put a thin film of soil on the bottom. I really like how this soil mixture looks. And again, I'm just doing a little bit more of a well-draining soil here versus a drainage layer, just because I know these plants will have and need a little bit more room for the roots because this terrarium is not really a tall terrarium. I'm just gonna 
flattening this out a little bit. Okay. And typically when I'm planting a terrarium, I like to start with one main plant first and kind of build around it. You can see that sometimes you want to go a little bit more sparse with your terrarium, so you might have like one or two plants and then put some seashells or maybe some stones in there. But I think I'm going to do all plants because if it's anything like it turned out like this one, the plants are just going to engulf the area anyway. So I'm going to see and maybe take out this begonia here, see if this could be a little bit of a centerpiece. I kind of like that it could be spilling out of the top of the terrarium. So I'm just going to take this out. Yeah, see, some would probably say that this is a little bit too big for this terrarium, but I do kind of like how it um, comes out. So maybe this could be a nice middle planting, perhaps. But because it kind of blocks the whole of where I'm going to work, I'm going to try to work around the periphery first. This Peperomia triner trinervula is actually quite nice. It doesn't have that has a pretty shallow root structure too. So I think that might be my first one. So I'm just gonna indent a little bit here because I could always put more soil on top. And try to hug that around the glass. And dip out some of the soil that it was in. And because I have two of these, I might as well just plant both of them. They're also quite small, so that works well. I'm just going to fill in a little bit of more soil to the sides because as I start to plant this a little bit more, it's going to be harder to reach some of these areas, even with the tools that I have. I'm going to use the bottom of this. It's actually a very handy tool. Okay. Just look that up. Let's see what it looks like. I already like how the way that's looking. Everything looks a little bit better with some green. Okay, so what is next? I also have this big meaty guy that could probably be grown somewhere, but I think two big plants will be too much, so I'm gonna leave those off to the side. I love, love this begonia conchifolia. It's also in bloom, as you can see. So, but the shape of the leaf with these thinner leaves, I think is quite quite nice. I also have a real love in my heart for this pilea, just because it looks so delicate. I mean, take a look at those little jewel-like leaves. And it's also nice because it's a little bit of a lighter shade of green, almost like a grayish green, silvery green. Okay, so first I'm gonna to try to pull this begonia conchifolia out. It's a little dry, so I will need to water this as I go, but that's okay because I have my little watering can here. Drop that in, a little airdrop. Yeah, that rounded leaf I think is quite nice. And also, what I also like about it is that it's, um, it's kind of got a similar cuticle or you know, just kind of the shininess and succulency to its leaves as the, similar to the, um, Peperomia that's in there now. Add a little bit more soil. But let's try with this Pilea. I've succeeded in making a mess. Yeah, this is quite nice. I think I'm going to put it a little bit more towards the front because the shape of the plant itself almost beckons to be curved in the front. Go with the current growth structure of the plant. I'll use this tool so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I'll push some soil over there. I'm gonna use this thinner part of the tool to get the soil over into the edges. Okay. 
And again, I'm kind of working the soil as I go because if it, it gets harder and harder to add the soil as I add plants. So you just kind of want to make sure that they are in the, it's in the area where you can, uh, where the plants are currently planted. Need a little bit more soil here. Oops. It's good to get a nice perspective because you could also see where you're missing soil and I'm missing soil a little bit here in the front. So I'm going to fill that in sooner rather than later. A little soil slide this adds ability to slide the soil with protecting some of the plant. dark color. I might put it right next to the pilea. Let's make sure that I don't hit the roots of the pilea. And you can give some space in the terrarium because these will grow out. And again, that's why I'm kind of showing this Peperomia jamesoniana right here because oof, this really grew out of the terrarium. And you could, you could always cut it back, but the idea is to let it grow for a little while and not have to tend to it so much. I have this toothbrush too to also clean off some of the leaves. So if you see some of the leaves, especially hairy leaves, they could get a little soil on them. I don't have any hairy leaf varieties here, but it just helps to kind of knock off the soil gently. So I'm just gonna give you a little progress report. That's kind of what it's looking like right now. Maybe I'll use the Peperomia, largely because it has a little bit more, it's a little fuller down here. If I went with this, again, let me just see if I could see what this looks like from putting it in the behind. Yeah, it kind of looks a little bare if I do that. Whereas this one, yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. I'll show you what, from, what I'm looking at it from my perspective of just, if I do this, where you could just see it kind of coming through. I'm, obviously it's gonna be in the terrarium, but you can almost imagine it. Or you have this one, which would be kind of coming out of the top, but you could see it's a little bit bare. So what I'm gonna do is go with this Peperomia here that was erroneously named Peperomia Hoffmanii. But as we know, we can't always go with what names the plant comes with. Often they are misidentified. What I like about this one is that it has a very similar mm -hmm. su succulency to the other plants that I have in here. Let me just make sure that I like the way that it looks. I do, I kind of like it like a little bit more of a dramatic plant in the back and then some of the plants to fill out in the front. And this will definitely come out the same way that Jamesoniana is. I mean, it's already coming out because it's a taller plant. This was just about the right amount of soil for this whole terrarium. I'm gonna use every last spoonful of this. And some of you might be asking like, how do you actually water this? 
That is something that is a little bit of a feel because this obviously has no drainage and you do need to water it, but you will start to see the soil darken up as you're watering it. So as it's starting to darken up, you don't want to water it so it's like sitting in a half of inch of water below. You just wanna water enough that the plants could get a nice drink of water, which I'm gonna do here. Also useful for getting any kind of soil off the side, although I didn't get really too much soil on the side. This peperomia definitely needed a drink. So I wanna make sure that I give a little bit of water to her. Now you can see that this side is a little bare, but that's not the one that I'm going to be displaying. It's a little bit more to be looked at this way. Yeah, and I think with the terrariums, you just gotta wait till it fills out a little bit. But I think this is gonna be perfect for my windowsill. So I just want to show you two months of growth. I mean, it's about two months of growth from this terrarium and you can see that the plants are kind of spilling over the edge. I think it was the peperomia that was the only one that was kind of poking out, but look at how this pilea has grown. It's <laughs> crazy. And then you'll see some peperomia here. And then this begonia conchifolia has really expanded. So. As I mentioned, this is only two months of growth. This is in a northeast facing window that I keep in my windowsill here. So it's not getting any kind of direct light, but it gets that really nice morning gentle light that starts to stretch in a little bit further as the summer hits. You could see I may have to actually cut this one back pretty soon, but how many times I actually water this? Because it's in my northeast facing window, I have to say, now I don't wanna steer you in the wrong direction, but I think I've probably only watered this four times since I have put this in my window. And that means it's like once every two weeks. And it just goes to show you that terrariums, you know, keep in a lot of that moisture. I have a lot of plants in here like the peperomia that don't need to be moistened all the time. And you could just see very prolific growth and no diebacks at all. Terrariums are fun and easy to do. And I think would make even a great gift. Share if you've made some terrariums in the past and what plants you're growing in them in the comments below. And if you like this episode, then give it a thumbs up. If you're keen on helping get the word out about the channel, then be sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss an episode. Don't forget, there's more good info up on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com and you can follow my daily plant escapades over at Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. Eager to learn more? Then consider enrolling in the houseplantmasterclass.com the first online audiovisual course on houseplant care, maintenance, and more.